Welcome back to TV5 News at 9, everyone. It is time now for Medical Moments with Covenant Healthcare. And joining us this morning, we have Dr. Mahir Sati from Covenant Cardiology. Thank you for calling in, doctor. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for calling in this morning because we're talking about atrial fibrillation, also known as AFib. So first, can you just explain in layman's terms what that is? Sure. So atrial fibrillation, commonly known as AFib, is a fast heart rhythm, abnormal heart rhythm that originates from the top chambers of the heart, commonly known as the atria, mm -hmm. and uh, basically cause quivering of those chambers and in turn, the bottom chambers of the heart will try to keep up and that causes irregularities of heartbeat and function. So I know this is nothing to mess around with, AFib. What are some symptoms that people should watch for just to recognize it? Question. So symptoms are variable for atrial fibrillation. So the most common symptom that pa patients report are palpitations or fluttering in their chest. Other symptoms can include uh, shortness of breath and dizziness. Some patients really don't experience any symptoms, but they present with this non-specific complaints like fatigue and just kind of general feeling of unwellness. But the symptoms are variable, but uh, shortness of breath and palpitations along with chest pain is the most common symptoms that we usually get. And would you say that there's a specific, uh, you know, demographic or types of things that put people more at risk for AFib? Yes, there is. So there's risk factors for atrial fibrillation. So those are include your traditional cardiovascular risk factors like high blood pressure and diabetes and atherosclerotic heart disease, congestive heart failure is also common. Some uh, not as common risk factors, but also predisposed patients to AFib is smoking history, mm -hmm. COPD and sleep apnea, obesity, all these are included. Some patients really don't experience any of these risk factors and, and they just have a family history of atrial fibrillation and kind of that predisposes them that way. But the risk factors are kind of the, the traditional risk factors for heart disease is what you would think of when you think of atrial fibrillation. Very good. Now, Dr. Sati, would you say there are treatment options available for AFib? Definitely is, yes. AFib has been around for a long, long time. Uh, there is uh, treatment options that include controlling the heart rate by itself or maybe try to convert the patients back into their normal sinus rhythm from atrial fibrillation. Um, also, treatment include procedural where we can do an ablation procedure to try to get rid of the atrial fibrillation. So there is plenty of treatment options out there when we discover AFib. That's great. Great to hear. So I think one of the other commonly talked about things with AFib is stroke. Can you just tell us a little bit about that correlation with stroke and stroke prevention? Absolutely. So stroke is um, uh, it's probably the most fearful complication of atrial fibrillation when the atria doesn't beat correctly inside the chest and in the heart that tends to have a formation of blood clots inside those atrias and mm. when uh, those blood clots break off and they go and they travel all over the body they can go and lodge into one of the uh, blood vessels in the brain and that's known as a stroke uh, so the treatment for that specific condition is mainly blood thinners we use medications oral medications to treat that patient take very very carefully and that basically prevents the blood clot formation inside the heart. Uh, for patients that are unable to tolerate blood thinners because of various reasons, we have now newer technology or devices that we can implant inside the heart that has been proven to reduce the uh, formation of blood clots and therefore um, a, a risk of stroke. Very good. Now, Dr. Satsi, say someone is uh, concerned that they might have AFib, what is their next step? So the next step is if they're having significant symptoms in their chest is to maybe get somewhere to get an EKG. That's how we confirm the presence of atrial fibrillation. So either go to an urgent care or family doctor or follow up with us as heart doctors if you have established care with us. And we have to discover uh, or confirm the presence of atrial fibrillation. Sometimes one EKG doesn't confirm it and patient may require wearing a monitor for some period of time to discover AFib. Uh, once we discover it, then usually the process goes as a referral to a heart doctor for further treatment and management, depending on the patient conditions. It's usually a case-by-case -case basis. Now, Dr. Sati, as a cardiologist, what do you love most about your work with patients? Uh, 
loaded question. Uh, <laughs> really, it boils down to my passion for the science and my passion for helping others and uh, really being able to have the knowledge and educate my patients about their heart disease and condition that kind of gives them the power to take matter into their own health and basically give them the best version of themselves that way. Well, we appreciate your work that you do here in our community. Thank you, Dr. Satsi, for calling in. Pleasure. All Thanks right. Me. Yes, of course. And if you want any additional information on today's topic, just head over to the hot links page on our website, WNEM.com.